Good day, everyone. My name is Simon Chadwick. I'm professor of Eurasian Sport at Ian Lyon Business School in France. I'm also one of the founding editors of GeoSport. Uh, I'm really excited to be holding this webinar today because it is on a, a, a subject and relates to an organisation that I take an, an intense interest in over the uh, over the last twenty years. Um, as somebody who works in business schools, I have an interest in in brands and marketing and commercial strategy. But I think with this particular organization, um, inevitably one gets drawn into politics and into matters of governance and, and I think also into issues relating to finance. Um, what we're going to be doing today is to talk about FC Barcelona, although we will, I guess, also talk about Barcelona as a polydeportivo. Um, and there are some major developments taking place. FC Barcelona has just recently held a, a presidential election. They have a returning president, uh, in other words, somebody who has served as president before, Joan Laporta. Um, and the date today is, is 17th of March, Wednesday, 17th of March, 2021. And, and, and Javier, something really important is going to happen today, right? Yeah, uh, today is going to have uh, something important in Camp Nou because today is the day that starts the mandate of uh, Joan Laporta, the second mandate after the mandate Joan Laporta had in between 2003 and 2010. So thank you very much, uh, Simon, to invite me in this GeoSport uh, webinar. I'm very fond of your uh, magazine, and I congratulate you for your work. Thank you, and it's really great to have you here because I know that you uh, take an intense interest, not just in, in Barcelona specifically, but politics more generally and, and the politics of sport more generally. So if you could begin just by telling us a little bit about who you are, what you do, where you work, and, and what your, your research and writing interests are. Yeah. Thank you very much, Simon. I'm a lecturer at the University of Big Central University of Catalonia. It's a university of uh, 6,000 um, students um, in the center of Catalonia, 50 kilometers to the north of Barcelona. And uh, I am a lecturer at the School of Business and Communication, where I teach journalism and sport marketing. Actually, I read my PhD uh, in 2009 in the Autonomous University of Barcelona. My PhD was about corporate communication in football and uh, after that uh, I started to work as a journalist and as a researcher on sport and communication and I've been researching about the dynamics of communication and the dynamics of a sport in these global times uh, since then. My specific interest now uh, it's working on this interdisciplinary field which is the merge between communication, place branding, public diplomacy and globalization, trying to understand that today it's very difficult to concrete the research in sport in one specific field. So to understand the dynamics of global sport, we must understand uh, its relationship between politics, its relationship between econ with the economy, with the society. And for example, I'm working now in a, in a specific book on the Disneyization of football. And actually, we talk about Disneyization, uh, taking into account that football is something absolutely wide in terms of a study of a study field. So uh, I work on communication, I work on politics, I work on on uh, economy, and all merge into the study field of football. And you don't just work in all of these fields; you're also uh, from Barcelona too. I, one of the things that I haven't asked you is: is are you a Barca fan? I'm a Barca fan, but I research a lot about FC Barcelona. So as you know, uh, although I'm a Barca fan, I have to be some, so a, a little bit critical with what is happening in Barcelona. And uh, I think that this is, this is normal in a, in a society such as the Catalan society where FC Barcelona is such a global brand and the activities of FC Barcelona uh, affects and influences to a lot of aspects of our sport culture. So mm -hmm. I'm... Uh, FC Barcelona fan, but I also research on FC Barcelona and on the new on the new dynamics of the club. For me, it's a, it, I, I can quite easily be critical about my club, which is which is not Barcelona, but that's that's another matter. <laughs> um, uh, no, I think for me, Barcelona really is is, is the embodiment of, of uh, a lot of the things that I'm interested in. So you know, I, I really do think we can frame today's webinar in terms of the geopolitical economy of Barcelona. Yeah. Um, so I, I know that we, we will explore that. But for people who are not familiar with the club, um, 
can you tell us a little bit more about it? You know, what's its history and, 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 and why, why has it sort of become such an iconic, not just football club, but I think political symbol and organization? You know, what, do, what do we need to know? What are the key highlights of Barca's history? Well, to talk about the Barca history, we, we would need a webinar of three days. Uh, but I, I just want to give you some ideas on the on the singularities of FC Barcelona. The first singularity of FC Barcelona is that FC Barcelona is today one of the most important global brands, sport brands in the world. But it's a still a club based on its memberships. So this establishes a very important or a very specific governance system, which uh, determines what happens in the everyday life of the club. So FC Barcelona is not a public company. So for this reason, FC Barcelona is not in the stock exchange market. And for this reason, in FC Barcelona, because FC Barcelona is a club, it's so important to keep the values of the club or even the founding values of the club. Which are the founding values of the club? Catalanity, democracy, poly, uh, multi-sport club, and universalism. So these four ideas, which were the main ideas that the founder Hans Gamper stated in the club in the beginning of the 20th century are still very important for a lot of members of the Catalan or a lot of members of the club based on the Catalan community. And for this reason, there's a big debate and always there's a big debate between what is FC Barcelona, what represents FC Barcelona inside the Catalan region and what FC Barcelona needs to communicate and needs to represent abroad. So why today FC Barcelona is a global brand? Because FC Barcelona has adapted itself in a global context where football is an industry and where, where clubs, if they want to compete internationally, they have, they have to transform themselves into entertainment multinationals. But although FC Barcelona can be considered an entertainment multinational, FC Barcelona needs to keep for the, for the local market, for the local publics, needs to keep these founding values based on Catalanism, democracy, universalism, and uh, multi-sport uh, club. Why FC Barcelona have been a so powerful political tool in Catalonia? Because during the Franco regime, Barcelona, FC Barcelona was a place, the Catalan, the, the stadium of FC Barcelona, Camp Nou, uh, was a place where it, the political uh, wish of the Catalan society for democracy, the political wish of the Catalan society for more uh, Catalanism uh, could be expressed without fear of the dictatorship. So uh, FC Barcelona have been during all his, its history a place where political values in favor of democracy and against dictatorship and against authoritarianism can or could be expressed with freedom. And for this reason, to summarize a little bit why FC Barcelona is so important, this idea can summarize a little bit why FC Barcelona is still important today when Catalonia is facing another debate, another political debate, which is the debate of the independence. Okay. You, you mentioned their uh, universalism. Could, could you explain to us what is meant by universalism? Well, the idea that FC Barcelona has to be a sort of uh, brand that, uh, well, and this, this was a, a first idea in, in 19, 1908 of Hans Gamper, but mm. it was, in my opinion, it was an idea to express the need of uh, being inclusive for all the uh, different stakeholders of, that mo of the society of that moment. Pay attention that FC Barcelona was founded for people that were not all Catalans. Actually, there were a lot of people not being Catalan in, um, in, the, in the beginning, in the foundation of the club. And in the moment where uh, Hans Gamper adapted those founding values, Catalanism, universalism, democracy, and multi-sport, was a moment where Hans Gamper had to uh, link the club with the uh, tra political traditions and, political, uh, and historical dynamics of the Catalan society of the moment. Uh, the, the club was founded in 1899, and uh, in 1908, after 10 years, there was a big economic crisis of the club that nearly um, uh, signified the end of the club. And Hans Gamper, in order to restructure the club, in order to 
give the club the possibility to survive, decided to merge the corporate values with, of the club with the, with the uh, political and cultural values of the modern Catholic society, the bourgeoisie in Barcelona. So uh, this relationship stated a permanent link between what was happening in the society and what was happening in the club. And this universalism, in my opinion, I'm not an expert in uh, the history of Barcelona. I'm more close to marketing and governance and communication. But in my opinion, this universalism can be linked with this idea to be inclusive, which is today also another idea that FC Barcelona wants to use in order to spread away the brand. Barcelona wants to be an inclusive club for the Catalans, for the Spanish ones, for the Chinese, for the... Uh, Americans, and this idea of inclusive, uh, of inclusivity is in the essence of the club. Okay, and just, just one final part to this before we move on. Um, we mentioned multi-sport club or polydeportivo. Uh, yeah. For people who are, who are unfamiliar with Barcelona, uh, could you tell us what that means and, and what is the range of sports that you find well, in, in FC Barcelona the has a big FC Barcelona has a big range of, of, uh, set of sports and actually has some professional sections and some non-professional sections. Only to talk about those uh, professional sports that are inside the club, we can say football, men and women, handball, basketball, um, rolling hockey, um, uh, indoor football. So there are a big range of professional clubs inside the same club and mm -hmm. a lot of non-professional sections mm -hmm. that use the brand Barcelona to compete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Actually, Pau Gasol is going to play this season in FC Barcelona basketball team. So Pau Gasol decided to leave the NBA to move to Barcelona, which, which is the, uh, it's, uh, his uh, hometown. Mm -hmm. And Bar Pau Gasol is going to finish his uh, professional career uh, playing in S A. -E -A CB League, the professional Spanish basketball league, with FC Barcelona. Okay, okay. Uh, we were talking, as we said, we said earlier, on the day when Joan Laporta will will um, begin the second, officially begin the second term as president. Yeah, he was he was uh, president for the first time starting in two thousand three. And, and this was a period when the club seemed to be in turmoil. There was intense yeah. politicking. And here we are nearly, not quite, but nearly 20 years later. Um, and, and still the club is embroiled in, 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 a, in, in turmoil and, and politicking. So I'm wondering, could you, could you tell me why you think Barcelona is such a political club? It's a political club because, as I said to you before, because of these founding values, the club has been always linked to what is happening to the Catalan society. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> the club uh, never wanted to be a part of the main dynamics of the society. For example, uh, in 1925, in the first Spanish dictatorship of Primo de Rivera, uh, the, the stadium of FC Barcelona in that moment, Las Cortes, was closed because the, 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 the attenders of the stadium decided to shout against the national Spanish anthem in a match where uh, there was also the Royal Navy as an, invi uh, as, uh, as members of, as an invitation, and the Royal Navy was um, uh, singing the uh, God Save the King. So the, 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 the attenders of the stadium decided to clap God Save the King instead of the, of the Spanish national anthem. Why? Because in, in 1925, there was a, a dictatorship where Catalan values and Catalan culture was misattended. So we have one specific moment where we can see this relationship, this link between Catalan culture and the club. Another moment during the civil war in 1936, the president of FC Barcelona, Mr. Suñol, was a president that was also a member of the Republican Party in Madrid, of the Catalan Republican Party in Madrid, and was uh, murdered in the beginning of the war. So the president of FC Barcelona was actually murdered in the beginning of the war because he was defending the democracy in the Spanish parliament. In 1968, 
there was the founding moment of the current slogan, more than a club. And this idea of more than a club was an idea stated by President Narcisa Carreras and was used after, one year after, for Manolo Vázquez Montalban in a magazine called Triunfo in a very important article, journalist article called Barça, 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 who was a, 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 an article defending the, the political specificities of FC Barcelona regarding uh, what is the uh, Catalan culture and Catalan tradition and why FC Barcelona is so linked to the Catalan culture. And uh, what we have to say is that FC Barcelona during the Franco's dictatorship was a place, FC Barcelona Stadium was a place where people could shout in favor of Catalonia and could shout in favor of democracy without the fear of the police. So, so these moments as an example can uh, give you an idea why this um, why the uh, club is so linked to what is happening in the Catalan society and in the Catalan politics. Finally, in, uh, from 2010 ahead, the club has also been active in a moment where 50% uh, of, of the Catalans ask for their independence. First asking for a, a referendum, then uh, doing all the steps towards the independence, even um, even um, uh, asking uh, for independence um, in 2000, in 2007, uh, 2017. So, uh, in that, for this type of things, in my opinion, FC Barcelona can be considered a political club. But uh, FC Barcelona is a political club. But uh, Glasgow Rangers is a political club. Celtic to Glasgow is a political club. Uh, San Paulo has political values. Livorno has political values. So, in my opinion, it's quite normal that because of the history of European football and because of clubs are very enrooted to the to the local to the local societies a lot of clubs can have uh, political values and can have a political positioning regarding the topics of the society so in my opinion it's but, not but, but, but do you think that uh, Barcelona's ownership structure is 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 responsible in part for contributing yes. to the political nature of the club totally could you, could, you, could you perhaps tell us something about ownership of yeah. the club for people who don't know totally totally agree with you uh because the structure of the club the club it's not a public company the club belongs to the members and are the members who vote for the president so who are the members members most of them and the voters actually most of them come from catalonia so, because the members who vote come from Catalonia, the uh, the um, a collective imaginary of Catalonia always has a, a, a very big influence to how the board of directors manage the club. So, if the FC Barcelona, uh, if FC Barcelona could be a public company, I'm sure that the uh, the capital, the person who paid for the stakes, uh, would say would 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 be the corporate values, even that, or would be would say how the club would have to manage in front of that of some uh, possible turmoils. But in 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 the case of Barcelona, because of the because of the specific structure of the club, it's very difficult that the board of directors can be uh, can be. Mm, uh, it's very difficult that the board of directors. Uh, uh, can't attend the uh, wishes of the voters or the wishes of the Catalan society. Now, one of the big issues uh, that, that surrounded the latest uh, presidential elections was was debt. Yeah, and 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 um, we know that Barcelona's debts are are large, very large. Um, can you tell us why? Why do you think the club's debts are so high? And what do you think is the route out of that, that position for the club? What can it do to, 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 to overcome its current financial predicament? Okay, we have to say that FC Barcelona has a very big debt and will have a lot of problems in order to surpass this financial situation. But the problem of the debt is not a single problem of FC Barcelona. It's a problem of a lot of clubs. Actually, if we take into consideration the last report of European leagues, we can see that most, most of the clubs dedicate between 61% and 65% to salaries, to sportive salaries. So one of the main problems of European football 
if the is the amount of money okay, to pay salaries. And one of the main problems is that the amount of money to pay salaries grows in the same proportion that grow the capacity of the clubs to create new income sources. So in that case, in, in, the, in FC Barcelona, we see this situation. We can, we can, FC Barcelona is an example of this situation. But if we take into account the uh, effect of the pandemic crisis, then we can see that FC Barcelona is facing a situation where, in, uh, where income decreases 14%, but expenses only could decrease 2%. This is, this is the, the, one of the big problems. And the situation is that in, in the current times, the debt of the club is nine times the entity's equity. So this is the, 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 the picture of the situation. How we can solve the situation or what, what is the future of that? Well, Mr. Laporte has one first uh, a chance or one first challenge, sorry, which is to redefine the, the short-term debt with the banks. And this means to trying to redefine, trying to restructure 480 million euros. Long-term debt with other clubs, it's 323 million euros. So this... This is one of the, the first challenges that the, the new uh, economical vice president of, of Mr. Laporta has to restructure the, the short-term debt. Then the other objective is to restructure the salaries because the salaries, according to the staff cost limit of the Spanish league, the salaries have to reduce 47% in the next season. So FC Barcelona is the club that will have to restructure more, more the salaries of the squad. The, we are going to see what is going to happen with the Messi contract. But uh, in my opinion, the Messi contract is good enough to give Messi the chance to produce revenues according to its brand. And the other aspect, and regarding to the brand, the other aspect, the, the other big challenge is how to increase the revenues. And Mr. Laporta has some ideas to increase the revenues. First of all, to create some bonus, let's see what is going to happen with this with this with this product, uh, which is to put into the market a new a line of bonus. And the other aspect is how Mr. Laporte is going to receive money from the big commercial structure of the club, which is Barça Corporate. Barça Corporate is the new big commercial structure of the club. Mar Barça Corporate is uh, has four four uh, divisions. Barça Studios, Barça Academy, Barça in merchandising. Mr. Laporta and FC Barcelona wants to ask uh, capital for 49% of this, of this commercial company. How much money is expected to receive FC Barcelona from Barça Corporate? Between 100 and 300 million euros. Is it going to be enough? It's going to be important. Uh, and there's then a second debate regarding how to increase income, which is, do we have to sell the 49% stakes package to one single investor? Or Barca needs to find different investors for each one of the, four, of the divisions? In my opinion, I think that if we take into account the significance of each division, we can find a good investor for each division. So it's not necessary to sell 49% of the shares of the share package of, the, uh, of this company that commercializes FC Barcelona brand to one single investor. Let's see. And above all, the main, the main, idea, the main uh, resource or the main asset that today FC Barcelona has is how to explode the brand with the Barca Studios platform. Today, mm -hmm. as, as you tweeted one day, and I, I, as I am researching now, we are living in a process of football Disneyization. So one of the aspects of Disneyization is the theming. And one of the other aspects of Disneyization, in my opinion, is not only theming, is creating entertainment. 
So this idea of creating entertainment is very linked to the new platforms that clubs are creating, such as Barca Studios or such as the Media House in Milano. We mm -hmm. need to create entertainment according to the brands. We don't need to use the, these media platforms only for corporate media. Corporate media are not efficient. Uh, what is efficient is to create entertainment for OTTs, for different types of platforms, etc. And this regarding the revenues. And the other aspect regarding the revenues is how Mr. Laporta will internationalize the brand using what he calls Barca Experience Centers. One of the aspects of Disneyization is theming, and uh, Barca Experience Centers are a sort of embassies of FC Barcelona around the world in different capitals. So this means the extremely possibility, a terrific possibility to theme FC Barcelona around the world, not only using theme parks, such as what is happening with Mission Hills in China, as you can, uh, and, uh, as you know perfectly, uh, not only what is happening, how is going, not only using what Real Madrid uh, wanted to do in Ras Al Kaima, which was the theme park, uh, Barcelona is going to use these Barca experience centers, uh, smaller, but trying to spread away the brand around the world with theming experiences. You mentioned the, uh, the word there. That I, I, I wasn't actually going to ask you a question about this um, because uh, players come and players go and the club, and the club continues. Um, so the club always transcends individuals, but... Uh, is Messi destined for the exit or do you think he'll be there again next season? This is a very journalistic question, Simon. So, uh, what, in my opinion, uh, there are a lot of possibilities that Messi leaves Barcelona because Leo Messi expects to win the Champions League and as a, as a footballer, he always wants to live. Uh, he, will, he always wants to win, sorry. And now Barcelona is a team under construction. So we have a lot of young players. These young players will, have, will need one or two seasons to be absolutely prepared to win the Champions League again. And we have a lot of teams that nowadays play very good and have a lot of chances to win the Champions League. Paris Saint-Germain, Manchester City, or Bayern Munich. Okay? But in my opinion, Jan Laporta can have the clue to uh, ask Messi to stay here. First of all, Gian Laporta and Leo Messi met each other in the past. So they know each other. So they created confidence among each other. And the other, asp and the other aspect is that Gian Laporta uh, now has the possibility to consolidate a team, which is that team with Ronald Koeman as a trainer, as a coach, with the young players, where, in my opinion, the evolution of the team, the, the, the performance of the team, is not bad in the, in, the, in the league. So in my opinion, Messi can have some, uh, some incentives, some uh, motivations to, to stay in Barcelona one, one, one year more or two years more because the club that where he was comfortable is the club where Jean Laporta lived and is the club that Jean Laporta expects to create or even the voters ask Joan Laporta to create again. So this is one, one aspect. And the other aspect is that, in my opinion, performance is, is uh, evolving correctly. So maybe Leo Messi will, will be comfortable in this uh, squad where young players are having uh, important roles and where young players are uh, demonstrating that they, they, can be, uh, they can be the players of the future. Uh, I think that Barcelona needs Leo Messi. And Leo Messi needs Barcelona. Okay. Barcelona, leads, Barcelona needs Leo Messi because Leo Messi, although he, uh, uh, he wins a lot of money every season, the uh, money that FC Barcelona received because Leo Messi is part of the assets that the, that, that the club can sell in the, agreement, in the sponsoring agreements are very important. So the amount of money that Messi generates because of its single brand it's much more than what Messi wins, according to his salary. Now, we've mentioned Laporta quite, quite a lot um, already during uh, this interview. So could, could you give us your assessment of, of Laporta? Do you, do you think it's a good thing that he's back? 
or or do you think uh, the club needed somebody different at this point? We need. Uh, we will see this in one year. Uh, the first thing we have to say is that a lot of voters, a lot of members, voted for Joan Laporta because Joan Laporta promised something that he had in the past, which is winning the Champions League. Uh, so there's an emotional vote. This happens also in politics. There's an emotional vote that is as is um, is uh, trusting with Jean, with Joan Laporta. But we are going to see if this emotional vote, vote has enough patience, is enough patience for the period that Barca is going to have, uh, is going to face in the future, which is a period where we need a very important uh, economic restructure and Barca will need some years to build a new squad uh, capable to win titles. So Joan Laporta is living nowadays, Jean Laporte is living because of the emotion. And uh, this happens also in politics, in a lot of governments, a lot of people, a lot of uh, new uh, presidents arrive to the, to the presidency because of the emotion of the society, because of the emotion of the vote. Uh, and we will see what is happening when Joan Laporta will have to face with the rationality of the reality. So, uh, we, we, will, we will have to wait one year, but I'm sure that in one year, we will be able to decide, to say if, if Joan Laporta will be able to change this negative economical dynamic and negative uh, performance dyna dynamic as it was expected, as, as it, what is, uh, as it what was expected during the, the electoral campaign. Okay. Uh, just one final uh, question, if I may, and, and this has arisen because of, of, of things that you said uh, during the, uh, the, the interview. Um, Barca has a Dutch manager right now, Koeman. Um, yeah. The last time Laporta was president, Rijkaard was manager. Uh, you go back even further than that, you have Cruyff, and we yeah. can think about you know, Mark Overmars and uh, yeah. De Boer and, and Van Bronckhorst and... Uh, what is this? What is this relationship between Catalonia and, and, and the Netherlands? Is, is there well, an explanation uh, for it or is it yes. just something that happened? There's, there's a perfect explanation, which, was, which is that Johan Cruyff was the, 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 the footballer that changed the history, the, the recent history, the modern history of FC Barcelona. Johan Cruyff arrived in Barcelona in mid-70s. And when Johan Cruyff arrived, uh, the football changed because of Johan Cruyff, because his way of understanding football. And above all, when Johan Cruyff became the manager of FC Barcelona, he uh, stated, he created a new way of understanding football, that idea that of, prof of uh, possessional football that has absolutely, uh, has taken a big effect on the personality of the performance of the club. So Johan Cruyff is a sort of a symbol of the modernity of Barcelona, is a symbol of well performance, of good performance, sorry. And it's a symbol and it's a, a, an icon of the transformation of those, the, that old club of the Franquist regime to a modern club and to a club that could win a lot of competitions. So the idea of success, in my opinion, uh, it's also related with Johan Cruyff. Mm -hmm. So Johan Cruyff was Dutch. Johan Cruyff changed football, uh, the way we understand football today, and we have a lot of influence from, from the Dutch football in Barcelona. Okay, so so part of uh, this part of Dutch DNA in uh, in in, yeah. in you're right. Okay, thank you. Okay, so thank you, thank you, uh, Javier, for that for that interview, and, and thank you for providing thank us you very much. insights. Um, we're very grateful that you joined us. Uh, yeah. And uh, we we hope that the people who watch or listen to to, to this webinar will uh, will find it as interesting as I found it. So thank you very much. I hope one day I can visit your university without taking into account these technological tools, and we can meet each other and give you a big hug. Thank you very much. I look forward to it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much.